people of Palestine to describe the atrocities that they face as a mere conflict. It is a, it is a systematic ethnic cleansing carried out by fascists and violent regimes with no regard for any human life. Like many of you here today, we show up every week at these protests because we know the same truth that you do, that what we are doing has had an impact. The pressure is working. People in power are noticing. Thank you to each and every 
during these deeply, deeply devastating times. The past few weeks have brought immense pain to Palestinians, Jewish, Arab, and Muslim communities across Canada, including in my constituency of Hamilton Center. And indeed, this has been a moral reckoning for all justice and peace-loving people around the world, bearing witness to the barbarity of death and destruction regardless of where they live, who they pray to, what language they speak, or what color of their skin as witnessed right here today with all of you. Countless innocent lives have been lost. These individuals had names and families and dreams for the future. And every day in our constituency offices across Canada, we hear the heart-wrenching stories of Palestinians in Gaza losing loved ones. Shame! In Canada, there's a palpable fear for family members abroad. Palestinians are enduring unimaginable suffering in Gaza and in the occupied territories of the West Bank, with each and every day escalating in destruction and despair. Over 400 Canadians are caught in Israel's siege of Gaza. And as a member of parliament, their stories of fear and uncertainty haunt me as they share them in our offices and our staff work around the clock to find means to escape the relentless bombing and bloodshed. And I've also had conversations with Jewish families who are deeply traumatized by the death and destruction, as we heard from Sister Suzanne earlier today. Their families are in anguish over the possibility of never seeing their loved ones again. And we know in Gaza, time is running out. And while there has been many condemnations going back to October 7th, and while we continue to advocate for the release of hostages, including political prisoners, the horrors unfolding in Gaza, especially the indiscriminate bombing of places like the Jabiria refugee camp are unconscious. Children are being lost in unthinkable rape. None of them guilty of any crimes. And I say shame! Yay! Hospitals and morgues are overwhelmed. Basic necessities are scarce. And vital facilities are under threat. And I say shame! Yay! And I quote the human rights lawyer and expert. Mr. Balakrishnan Rajagopal, who reported on November 8th as a special rapporteur on the right to adequate housing, and I quote, carrying out hostilities with the knowledge that they will systematically destroy and damage civilian housing and infrastructure, rendering, rendering an entire city such as Gaza uninhabitable for civilians is a war crime! The UN expert went on to say, and let us be very clear and precise with our language, that systematic or widespread bombardment of housing, civilian objects, and infrastructure are strictly prohibited by international humanitarian law, criminal law, and human rights law, and I say shame! Shame on, the, shame on the double standards of the Western world when they talk about an international rule-based order. Raja Gopal, a human rights expert at the UN, he said clearly, such acts amount to war crimes and when directed at civilian population, they amount to crimes against humanity. And then there's the response of our government under Prime Minister 
Justin Trudeau, who this morning was called out by Canada's former ambassador to the UN, Louise Blanc, who stated the following about yesterday's disgraceful vote at the UN General Assembly against illegal Israeli settlement. against 145 UN member states on the question of occupation because the world is awakening to the atrocities in Gaza, the atrocities Woo! in the and the atrocities in the West Bank. And she asked this very important question, Canada's former UN ambassador. Canadians need to ask our government the rationale behind this devastating decision for Canada's standing in the world. Again, this is Canada's former UN ambassador who said, and I quote, from my experience, the United States of America did not ask us to side with them. We did this on our own. But why? Because the cost is enormous. And we should be told the reason. So to Justin Trudeau, I say this. What do you say to the thousands and millions of Canadians across this country who are demanding a ceasefire, who are demanding justice, who are demanding for international human rights and law to be applied around the world equally and fairly? I ask you, how could you? Just last week, both Liberals and Conservatives voted against our NDP motion demanding a ceasefire and the release of hostages. And yesterday, the Prime Minister directed the Ambassador to vote against illegal occupation. So my question to the Prime Minister in the House of Commons this week is when would he find the moral courage to stand on the side of justice? <laughs> know that you're mobilizing in these streets. It matters. Know that it is making a difference. And know this, that to the Prime Minister, I say, despite your crocodile tears, Nobody seriously believes you that you support a two-state solution. Because how could they? Canada and Canadians will not remain a silent observer where Gaza suffers. And our party will continue to apply the pressure to use all tools that we have available to us in the House. And I want to be clear. We have long proposed for a cease of arms sales to the states of Israel and other nations violating international law. And we've been putting pressure since the onset to demand a cease fire now. atrocities began. It was our party who called for an emergency debate in the House. A debate with both Liberals and Conservatives made it very clear their position. So, when we talk about a permanent 
and unimpeded humanitarian access to civilians as granted under international law. It was liberals and conservatives who blocked it. And when we called for a thorough investigation into war crimes, it is liberals and conservatives who block it. Make no mistakes. Collective punishment is a violation of international law, and Canada must demand accountability at the International Criminal Court. Moreover, I want to be clear about our NDP position. We are calling for an end to the occupation. We are calling for an end to the occupation and a sustainable, just, and lasting peace for both Palestinians and Israelis. But I want to take this moment to address all of you right now, right here, because our concern is not limited to just overseas. But here in Canada, the rise of anti-Palestinian racism, Islamophobia, and anti-Semitism is deeply, deeply, deeply concerning. And I think about the charges recently brought by the Calgary police against the Palestinian activists. And I need you to know that new Democrats will continually defend your charter of rights and freedoms, which is foundational to our democracy. And section two enshrines the freedom of religion, the freedom of assembly, a peaceful assembly just like here today, and of association. We must defend these rights from attack and ensure that these freedoms are extended to everyone in Canada. And I'm very concerned. I see my brothers very concerned about the attacks here that Palestinian Canadians are facing when advocating for your existence, your statehood, and your human rights, particularly during this time of the siege. So today, in solidarity, I proudly wear the kufir. And I look out, proudly display the Palestinian flags and colors. And to all of you here today, I have to say that the attempts by some to vilify, to criminalize you, must be fought. And that any links to so-called terror and extremism, the calls for the outright ban. I've heard firsthand how you're being targeted in your workplaces for calls of termination, how you've been violently harassed in your communities, how you've even been subjected to calls from expulsion in your schools for peacefully advocating for justice for your people. And I am here to say shame. Unacceptable to misrepresent Palestinian solidarity rallies as support for terror. And it's devastating to hear individuals facing this targeted vigil simply for speaking up to your own existential existence here in this country. And I want to make it clear, furthermore, the extreme example set by the authoritarian gun board regime to censor my sister, Sarah Jemma, along with her removal from her own caucus, will empower and embolden others to become less tolerant of, of those rights. Now, I do have concerns about the rise of violent rhetoric, be it anti-Palestinian or anti-Semitic. And I have heard fears from the Jewish Canadians who have expressed for their personal security and safety in our community. And I have to say, 
that in this moment, for years, we have stood against anti-Semitism. We have called that out. We know that that is wrong, but that is not what this is about here today. We recognize and will continue to combat anti-Semitism and white supremacy, no matter where it rears its ugly head. We recognize, as we heard from Sister Susanna earlier today, that both Jewish and Palestinian communities are hurting, and they're worried about what will happen in these coming days and weeks. With so much uncertainty and division in the world right now, we must do everything we can in this country to make sure Canada is a place where everybody feels welcome and belong, including each and every one of you. And we will do this by respecting the rights and freedoms and protection that are enshrined in our charter. And I remain committed to fighting for policy and initiatives that promote tolerance, understanding, and respect for the dignities of all communities including our Palestinian Canadian neighbors. In these dark times, it is vital that we treat each other with compassion and empathy and recognize our shared humanity. My commitment to you is unyielding. I see your pain. I feel your pain. And know that when I return to Ottawa, I will bring your collective voices back into the House of Commons to continue to, continue to demand ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! End the occupation! End the occupation! End the occupation! End the occupation!
Israel uses to subjugate Palestine, to refuse to transport those weapons, to pass motions in our union. And my friends, I'm proud to tell you that the labor movement around the world has responded. Unionized workers have blockaded ports, preventing ships.
around you right now. It's almost the evening and there's still anywhere between 20 to 30,000 people on the streets. This is a historic moment. All across this country, we are seeing mobilizations. People just like you and I, regular people who want peace and justice are out on the streets saying, of Genocide Joe's building, the American Embassy. And I say Genocide Joe. I'm proud to be joined today by Omar Zahir, a Palestinian American comedian, lawyer, and activist. Please give him a warm round of applause here in Toronto.
because we have the truth. Everyone of you standing here today has the truth. And I want all of you to know that we are going to free Palestine. And we, and we are all going to march straight from Toronto to Gaza one day. And we are not ashamed, no matter how much they try to shoot us, we are not ashamed to say, from the river to the sea, you all to look around each other and see how beautiful this day is. Black, white, Arab, Jew, Christian, Muslim, we are all people here today. We Palestinians sometimes have to remind people, I come from a Christian Palestinian father and a Muslim Palestinian mother. We are one people. We are one people. We have to explain to people. I always, I always tell people, Jesus of Nazareth, not Jesus of Nashville. It's one of us. We are the people of truth 2,000 years. And so before I let you go, I want you all to look at each other, look at the person on your right, and look at the person on your left, and tell them thank you for coming today. Thank you for coming today. We hate apartheid, we hate racism, but we love our people and we love each other. And do not forget, do not forget that you stand on the side of truth. If Martin Luther King were here today, he would say, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! If Malcolm X were here today, he would say, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! If Nelson Mandela were here today, he would say, free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! The prophets Muhammad and Jesus were here with us today. They would say in a loud voice, free, free Palestine. 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 And let's hear it one more time before they end this thing and we all go home. We have to make sure that the streets of Toronto shake. That the streets of Toronto shake. for a ceasefire and there are people like us who stand up for the truth and I want you all to do it now for 60 seconds all together as loud as you can. Cease fire now! 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 C
apartheid that will end occupation. We want a free Palestine now. Yeah! And sisters and brothers, today we are coming out here, but today is not the final time. We need to keep hitting the streets. We need to make sure that we keep up the pressure. Look around you. Look around. This is what it's going to take. Please keep hitting the streets. When, I, when you go home today, I want you to do something. Go to ceasefirenow.ca. There is a tool there where you can send an email directly to your member of parliament telling them that you want a ceasefire now. Can you do that when you go home? Please do that. Can you do that when you go home? Ceasefirenow.ca. Can you?
done your enough for your amazing activism, for your amazing sense of humanity and fairness. With people like you, with people like you, we will live if we Palestine. Palestinian over there. So yes, Palestine is free. And we have to continue our threat the occupiers and their ugliness and their support. So sisters, comrade, for people all like me, by the way. I feel very young because of you. Back to 2003, we, Indians, like as fire workers, the group, others, at Nassim Square, sorry, at Nassim Square, 3,000 people in Toronto. Iran. We were able to the Canadian involvement with the war against Iran. And now, and now, it's the pristine topic to get back together with this unity again and to say free Palestine. I love because it really has the nerve. Each one, the races, donors, what she said, from the river sea. From the river I encourage everyone to scan the QR codes on the flyers. The QR code includes multiple things. One, it has a private server 
to our Twitter army. We are building a Twitter army because we're fighting two battles. Let's be honest and straightforward. There are two battles right now. A battle that's being fought on the ground in Gaza. And the second battle we are fighting it right now. And that's the battle of the narrative. Let's pay attention. There are two battles. Battle on the ground that's being fought in Gaza. The other battle is being fought right now and around the world. And that's the battle of the narrative. We need to control the narrative. So together, united everyone, we need to put our voices to the elected officials and everyone that's on Twitter. So I encourage everyone to scan the QR codes. It has our demands. It has a petition to sign. It has the Twitter army. It has our Instagram page for updates. I encourage everyone to scan the QR code and pass on the flyer to the next person. Because don't estimate the, the power of fighting the narrative. They're spending millions of dollars, millions of dollars to tweak and make fake. But together, united, we will protect our narrative. We will promote our narrative. That's why we are on these streets. To promote our narrative. To tell the people what we're doing. Because if we are not on the streets, a lot of people would not know what's going on in Palestine and Gaza. Look around you. There are so many new faces in the crowd. So many new people. Everyone from different faiths, different backgrounds has joined us. So for that, I give you and I tell you, thank you for joining us. I'll give it up to yourselves. for being out here tonight. Remember, tonight is only one step. We have a lot of work to do. Look around you. This is what it's going to take. It's going to take us uniting. We need to keep hitting the streets. We need to let positions of power, those in government, let, we need to let them know that we want to cease fire now. Now, we're going to wrap it up for tonight, so please make sure you get home safe. Before we do, there's two quick announcements. One is from a journalist, and the other one is from a poet. And then, we're going to ask everyone to get home safely. Please make sure. There will also be some uh, facilitation of prayer as well.
Assalamu alaikum, brother and sister. Mashallah, mashallah, guys, I'm happy to be with you guys. And you guys are gonna hear from us a small qasida. It's called Bowen. I don't know what you call it in English, but it's called Bowen. Let me hear it. You guys, all of the attention I want from you guys, please. Jumhur! Ya Jumhur, Ya Jumhur, Ya Jumhur! Asamakum qasida jadida! Ala lahin ya ib, ya ain, ya ain! Ya ain, ya lil, ya ain! Al qasida arabiya asila! Fi Canada al is! Wal is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala! Wa uva'na! Look at Kalam Bego Sena! Unafs il Kalam! Illi nigula! Nigida! Akbar Gaziya hiya! Gaziya falas! Tina! Ari das maha! Akbar Gaziya hiya! Gaziya falas! Tina! الشرق الأوسط في خطر والغرب وضع عال عال والقدس له خمس وسبعين عام فقيرنا يمشي مع الترم بسيدة وبخيلنا في الباك صفر الرصيدة وكريمنا وصل حسابه ملايينا يا أمة الإسلام يا أمة الأديان يا أهل العقائد يا أهل الدين يا أهل الأكابر العز الله وتعاونوا على دينه تكاتفوا وتعاونوا وتآزروا وتشاوروا ونحقق اللي نريده ونصير صف ويركدون شياطينه حنا البشر حنا البشر حنا العرب واهل الصفات الحميده حنا العرب اخوان بالعسر ولينا كيف نعيش تنعيشة سعيده والبارحه كنا حزب واليوم حساب ويسفنا فلان ونقبل ايده ويسبنا نتنياهو ونقبل ايده ويقول فري قد ونقول له حبيبنا وحنا بعض كلامنا ما نجيده ونسوي لنا فاهمين ونسوي لنا فاهمين وعلى دينه ونجهل حقوق الله وحنا عبيده ونجهل حقوق انسانيتنا وما نريده واخر ما نقوله تبقى فلسطين حرة بيا وتبقى غزة رمزا لعزتنا وفري فري فلسطين فري Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. We're going to be wrapping up the rally for tonight. There will be a space for uh, Muslim sisters and brothers who are going to be doing prayers. There will be an announcement for that right over on the corner here in the side. For everyone out, please make sure you get home safely. Thank you, thank you so much for being out here tonight.